uh, tomorrow this is the second time we've spoken in lockdown yes, yes yeah. i do remember you it was i was doing <laughs> of interviews with uh, a load of american people and it was i finally heard another english accent yeah because also i think you were in england and i was in england but it was taking place at like midnight wasn't it because it was for all the oh. u.s press yeah well, yeah, this is more civilized times. Times. It was so late in the evening. <laughs> um, I'm going to, well, I'll begin with you tomorrow. I just want, well, it's a, it's a question for both of you, really. But what it was about this, about this script and about this, the, the project that made you want to get involved? Yeah, so I, um, I got the audition and um, I um, sort of was really interested in it. And I decided to read the script and I absolutely loved it. Um, obviously, it was based on the book. So I decided to read the book and I love that too. And it was one of those things where you read it and it's like even though I'm not even if I'm not in this I'm still gonna watch it because it's gonna be great um, and I found that Kelly was a part I really could relate to and she was a super inspiring young woman who could inspire other young women to you know be who they want to be and um, I love the way that she teams up with all the other babysitters and become this unbreakable force to be reckoned with. Yeah what was the what was the main draw for you Una? Yeah the main draw I mean for me it would probably be my character as well. I think Liz is such a strong, um, just crazy cool. And like, I mean, the way that she dresses, her motorcycle, it was just like the kind of character that I wanted to do. I mean, these babysitters are essentially superheroes um, to me. And like, I just was so excited and I was excited to work with another cast of kids and because that's always fun. Um, but yeah, I think it was probably Liz because I think she just is such a cool, crazy pink haired young woman and i was just really excited to maybe take that on and then i did so it was cool <laughs> so did you uh una did you ever have sort of nightmares when you were a kid was there any sort of recurring kind of monsters that used to visit you huh. um, i don't think I, I i don't know i don't i never really had nightmares per se i kind of just had like eerie creepy like nightmares like i know i had a lot of dreams about zombies when i was younger for sure um but they were never, they were never like fast running zombies. They were just like very non-threatening. So I don't know. I don't have like an exact answer to that, but in general, I guess it would be zombies. Yeah. Did you ever dream of zombies tomorrow when you were younger? No, unfortunately I did not. Um, I would have liked to see what your dream would have been, Una. But um, no, I, I, I had a couple of nightmares as a kid, but not that many. I had a lot of nightmares of like being alone just like waking up and just no one being on the face of the earth, which was interesting. But um, yeah, I didn't really get that many nightmares. Yeah, I've got to say, if, I, if you are going to have scary nightmares, those non-threatening slow zo zombies are probably about as nice as a monster as you're going to get. Um, <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Um, so I'm wondering, so I'll start with you tomorrow. If you're, you're babysitting for the night, you're looking after a young child and the kid says, I want to watch a movie uh, and you get to put on a film that they've never seen that you get to share with them that you meant a lot to you when you were growing up. What are you choosing? I'd have to say, that's a really good question. <laughs> um, I'd have to say probably, and this probably sounds very, oh, of course you'd say that, but Harry Potter. I grew up watching the Harry Potter series and if I had to pick an exact movie I'd probably pick Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban because I think that was to me one of the most important movies um, I loved Hermione's part in that which was very sort of female she's sort of you know it plays with the time and she's been doing extra lessons and things like that which I loved and also no one died so um, that's the only movie in Harry Potter sorry spoilers but no one died <laughs> um, so yeah yeah, well, how about you, Una? What, what, what sort of film would you like to, to share to the next generation that meant a lot to you growing up? Yeah, um, I would probably say like any of the Tim Burton movies. Um, I was such a big fan of them growing up. My dad showed them to me when I was like super young. Um, I would probably say like Nightmare Before Christmas, Corpse Bride, that kind of thing. Um, but also, I mean, this isn't really a scary movie, but I really loved Miyazaki movies growing up, and I recently rewatched them, and it, they're just so special, and the soundtracks are so beautiful, and they just, there's a lot of memories that I hold um, from those movies, so I'd probably show them that. And as uh, Una, you mentioned, obviously, the character's look uh, at the beginning of the because she's got this very kind of distinctive look. I just wondered if you were able to, to be, were you given or did you steal any kind of nice, of, of her kind of outfit or any memorabilia for that matter? And is that something you've ever sort of done? Some actors take one thing, don't they, from every character they play? Yeah, um, I'm trying to think. 
I don't think I actually took anything from her costume per se, but I remember I took one of like this because on set they'll provide you like these big coats because like they want to keep you warm, obviously. Um, and I remember I kept that coat and it's such a great coat. It's probably very expensive, something that I wouldn't normally get, but it's a very, it's a very good coat. <laughs> Uh, Tamara, you mentioned obviously Harry Potter and what it obviously uh, meant a lot to you and you as you've been growing up. So how was it working with Tom Felton? Do you have to kind of put any pre-established kind of ideas to one side and not think, okay, you're someone who's been a part of something that meant so much to me as a child? Or, and do you have to just treat them as a kind of uh, an equal on the set? Or do you have those little moments where you just go, oh my God, there's Draco Malfoy? <laughs> yeah, I mean... I love the bad characters, so Joko Malfoy was immediately like, yes, I'm rooting for you. I know you won't win, but I'm rooting for you anyway. Um, so yeah, it was a really big moment for me. I definitely fangirled the first time I met him. I tried to keep it cool. I don't know whether he thought, oh, she's, uh, she's very excited, but I have no idea. But yeah, I think it is, you sort of have to push aside the fact that they've been so involved in your childhood and they don't even know it to sort of get to know them, but he's such a down-to-earth person, so amazing, so himself. He's not, he's not anyone else, he's Tom. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a real joy to work with him. And I think he did know that he had a really large involvement in my childhood. Yeah. And, and Uno, I just wanted to, because I mean, you've worked with some huge names. I mean, with obviously you've Jake Gyllenhaal and Nicole Kidman and people like that. Is, is it, do you, do you look past the kind of stardom on set or do you still get those moments when you just think like, yeah, because they're faces that they're sort of ingrained on all of our minds, aren't they, from such a young age? So what's it like kind of collaborating with, with people like that? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I always get scared whenever, I mean, I'm, it's like a, it's a big deal. I mean, I feel like you have these like preconceived notions about these people and like who they are and like the kind of parts that they portray. So you really have no idea what they're actually going to be like in real life. Um, but I, I think, I mean, it's definitely like the first couple days are like weird because like, you know, you're matching like seeing you on a screen to like seeing you 3D in real life. Um, but I, I think, I mean, after a couple of days, you realize they're just like, they're just like us um no but they're I mean they all are have these like very unique personalities like um and Tom is definitely one of those people he's just such a I mean he's such a prankster he's so he's just a joy to be around and he's great with kids too so and uh, and tomorrow I mean you in in the movie of course this this film is about young people coming to the rescue and saving the day in a way that actually the adults probably wouldn't quite know how and this is quite a tenuous link but obviously at the moment you know kind of in the UK we've seen like Marcus Rashford the footballer who's kind of this young man who's kind of taken on the government and won in terms of giving kids free school meals and it does feel like when watching the news and stuff at the moment that young people have got a voice at the moment you know if you look at the kind of protests and stuff on the tv and everything that's kind of going on in the world it feels like young people are very much at the kind of the front and center of, of this kind of like this movement and this kind of change we're all striving for do you and it's a question to you both really but do you both feel a kind of a, a, not a responsibility to be part of that change but do you feel like your voice is actually being heard yeah definitely i think as an actor and as someone with a social media and a platform and a, a few couple of followers um, I think that at the moment I'm trying to um, use the followers as a platform where people can come and learn things and obviously the Black Lives Matter movement is absolutely massive at the moment and so I'm trying to educate young people to, to sort of show them that they have a voice. If you can't go out and protest, which I completely understand, you can read books, you can go onto websites, you can call in and sort of petition for people, you can sign petitions, you can really educate your, uh, yourself about this if you can't get involved physically. Um, and I think it's really important right now because of obviously the newest generation is coming in with these amazing ideas and having more of a voice than I think we ever have. Um, I think it's really important to use that voice for change and for good and to really sort of build the world we want it to be in the future for our generation, but for the future generations to come. Yeah, because Una, what, what I was just going to ask as well, because I interviewed the actress Jane Seymour the other day, who's obviously, you know, she's been a, around for a long time. She's a real kind of veteran actress and, and a real star of the kind of screen and old Bond movies and stuff. And we, we got onto the subject of the fact that when she came into the industry, her only platform in many ways was just her movies. But how, how does it feel to be rising in an, through a, an industry at the moment that has social media? Because in some ways, that's become a whole other side of it, hasn't it? It's not just about your output from as a professional point of view, but 
also who you are kind of in the public eye on social media. Yeah, no, I mean, and it's, it's huge. I think social media is such an amazing platform in the way that you can reach like people across the world. And, um, and I would honestly say the same thing as tomorrow. Like, I feel like I, I do have a significant amount of followers that I, I feel like I can reach. And so I think how like putting those petitions on your story and and making sure that people have the resources to learn because those resources are out there. And um, so and, and yeah, I, I totally I think it's it's so important to find your lane. And um, at the moment, while everyone is in quarantine is and staying home, I think social media is a way to share those resources and share those uh, different petitions and stuff like that. Um, and that is our lane currently. And I'm trying to utilize that as much as I can, so. And talking of quarantine, uh, tomorrow, last time we spoke, you said that for the, the launch of Artemis Fowl, that your mum had done like a red carpet in your garden or something. You've done a little kind of homemade premiere. I was just wondering if you, if, well, for both of you, if you've got any um, sort of, uh, yeah, ideas of, of or, or homemade premieres set up for, for the launch of a babysitter's guide to monster hunting as well. I mean, yeah, they, um, I actually have the same thing as before, but this time I have like a massive poster of um, a babysitter's guy. I think Una has it too. Um, yeah. With a red carpet, which is absolutely massive. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to take some pictures. But tomorrow I am definitely going to take the advantage of getting in my PJs with fluffy socks, eat a tub of ice cream and watch a baby's guide. <laughs> uh, do you have any plans to watch it? Because obviously, you did, I mean, it, it was always going to be on Netflix. So it was always going to be a home entertainment sort of streaming thing. But just over the course of kind of lockdown, we've all got so used to watching stuff at home. <laughs> so have you got any kind of at home sort of home premieres to, with or maybe with friends and family and, and to watch this? Yeah, I mean, I don't currently, but um, because a lot of my friends are actually out of town, but um, yeah, no, I mean, there's like crazy cool tools online now. Like there's this thing called Netflix Party. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but it's like this platform where you can basically like watch movies at the same time as your friends and like comment on them on the side. And like, yeah, I, I, maybe I might be using that tomorrow. But yeah, I got sent the red carpet as well. So I'm excited to take some photos on there. So my final question really was what's sort of coming up for you, but if I start with you, Una, have you got any kind of projects in the pipe, pipeline and how have you found the kind of auditioning process over the course of lockdown? Yeah, I actually do have a project lined up um, that I'm maybe, sh I think it might be November or December that I'm starting. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been different for sure. But um, I mean, in, in the first place, I was already doing a lot of self tapes. I think self tapes are kind of like the new thing now. Um, so yeah, I, it's kind of just doing self tapes, um, having Zooms with your managers. Um, things have definitely changed, but I think um, we've all been adapting and, and yeah, it's good. It's great. And tomorrow, how about you? Because obviously from sort of rising from Barnet to the big screen, have you got much else going on at the moment? Um, yeah, I, I think that, as Una said, things are really developing um, in the world of technology and online auditions and things like that. Um, yeah, I've been doing more auditions. Um, I actually have a couple things lined up um, and a couple things I'm still working on. Um, so yeah, I, I may be getting into animation and um, just a little clue, not too sure what I can say right now. So I'm just going to say animation, but um, yeah, that should be exciting, which I'm excited for you guys to see more from me in this, um, well, boring time. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I've been doing a couple auditions but um, apart from that I've been watching Netflix, doing some school, just having fun and sort of um, taking this time of not traveling and not filming to just time to myself. Brilliant well thank you so much for your time today it's been a real pleasure speaking to you and best of luck with the movie it's really good fun so I can't wait for to show it to everyone I know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Okay, bye bye see you later. Ladies and gentlemen you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!